So guys, I managed to get a haircut, so my life is no longer endangered of overheating. And today is a very exciting day because I had a different video planned for today, but yesterday I was recommended by you guys on the Discord server to do a video about streaming services. You know, Google Stadia, GeForce Now, those, those ones. So I decided, you know what? That's an absolutely great idea. I want to know how good these things are. Realistically, I don't want to find out from someone else. I want to find out myself, check out whether these things truly are as lag free as the other YouTubers are saying, and whether these things are a suitable replacement for your gaming PC in 2020. Should you go out and start selling your gaming PC and switch to Google Stadia for $9.99 a month? Or maybe if you don't have a gaming PC yet, but you have decent internet, could you actually be using this? Well, today we're going to find out because I went out and I bought a month of Google Stadia for $9.99, which isn't a lot, by the way. They have quite a few games on there. Of course, you do have to go out and buy the games as well, which is always nice. If you buy Stadia Pro, which is what I bought, you have a few games for free. So we will be trying those out. So guys, you guys are amazing. The number of people subscribed watching these videos is now all the way up to 12.7%. So if you guys like these videos, if you're into tech, I post tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. So so if you're not yet subscribed and you're part of that 87.3% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my notification bell, become part of the 360p gang. Follow me on my social media here and here because I want to know what future videos you guys want to see. Join our Discord, join our Reddit, and let's move on to the video. Okay, so first of all, let's get one thing out of the way. I have gigabit. I have working gigabit with very low latency and really high speeds. So latency shouldn't be a problem here. I think I'm giving Stadia and GeForce Now a pretty good chance here. I think this is probably going to be better than what a lot of people would be able to give these two apps. But what I want to know is, is this a replacement? Can we start selling our gaming PCs and go out and use these services? Obviously not yet because the games on these services are limited and of course you won't be able to run multiple things on them like for example I need to run Premiere Pro, I need to run VR and that isn't a thing yet. But imagine you could have in the future a headset like the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Quest could have cellular and connect to a 5 gigahertz network and you would be officially able to stream games from let's say Steam VR onto the Quest wirelessly wherever you are. Now technically you are already able to do that with say virtual desktop but then you need to have decent internet whereas in the future you could be paying for these services and streaming straight to the Quest. Now of course now Google Stadia offers a few interesting things like putting it straight on your Chromecast, having a Stadia controller and being able to play just on the Chromecast which is really interesting because the Chromecast as we all know is basically a standalone device that has pretty much no hardware. So it being able to actually transcode those games is very, very interesting. Now, I haven't been able to try that out because I don't have a Stadia controller, but we will be trying it out on my computer today. Of course, you could also be playing on your phone, but realistically, I don't think many people will be doing that considering the phone is a tiny screen and you would want a Stadia controller for that as well. So I think without further ado, let's move on to the actual testing in this video. So as you guys can see, we have Google Stadia here and um, I've already claimed a few games like I've claimed Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, I've claimed Destiny 2 and I've claimed this game called Grid. So I think personally we should start with a game that requires really low latency. So let's start with Player's Unknown Battlegrounds. Now I personally own this game on Steam so I know how this game should be played. Let's see, let's see how it does. Now again, the options for games are pretty limited on cloud streaming services right now, but hey, look, it is growing. And if it is a platform that is meant to stay alive, those libraries will continue growing. Now, what I also want to know is, can this work on controllers? I'm gonna go grab a controller because I already know that this works on mouse and keyboard because I have tried it out just a little bit to make sure everything was working for the video. Now, what I haven't tried is the controller. So I want to know whether, okay, wow, that was fast. It just said controller linked. I pressed the button. This is my Xbox controller, by the way. And it said controller linked. That is absolutely amazing. Let's see how good this thing is on controller wirelessly. So this is definitely very interesting, especially since now uh, Stadia actually offers a two month free trial. So you can actually be trying this out for yourself. Uh, I'm just gonna go with whatever they give me for default here because this is not my main account. Let's see how this goes. 
I'm very interested to see latency wise on the controller because not only does it have to grab the latency from the controller going to the computer, it also has to grab the latency of going to Stadia. So this is certainly going to get very interesting very fast. Let's check this out. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, my next one. Jesus Christ, fat. Um, I'm not gonna deal with voice chat. I am not dealing with voice chat. Okay, so we're gonna try that again with my mic disconnected. I don't want anyone to hear me. Yep, can't hear me speaking. Cool. So, so far, there is no latency that I can see within Google Stadia, and I'm actually connected with, it seems, other players that are just playing on normal platforms. So Stadia is cross-platform, which is really nice, and I'm playing on controller, and there isn't any latency between me actually moving with the controller and moving in-game, which is actually really nice. I really, really like this so far. The graphics are... they're not as good as I would have locally, definitely not, and it's not even full screen, so I don't think there's any option for me to change the fact that it's not full screen. I'm gonna try going to graphics. Nope. No option for me to make it on an ultra-wide, so if you guys have an ultra-wide, I guess you're stuck playing 16x9. Yeah, in the lobby here, absolutely no lag between the controller and the game. I can throw, absolutely no lag at all. So, so far, so good. I mean, to be honest, latency-wise, there is no latency, okay? So this is gigabit internet. The ping is pretty damn good. Uh, currently getting about 26 ping on uh, Stadia. No latency between me moving the controller and it happening inside the game. So props to Stadia right there. They're doing that really, really well. I don't think I need to get into an actual game. I will try GeForce Experience. I'm going to launch a game on GeForce Experience right now, and we'll see how GeForce Experience does, because I'm really interested to see how that compares to Google Stadia, because Google Stadia, I'm giving it a strong 7 out of 10. Um, the points lost are mainly for graphics and the fact that I can't make it onto my ultra wide, but everything else they are doing absolutely correctly. So why not? Let's try Goat Simulator on GeForce now. Let's just see how that goes. So again, both of them actually analyze your network before they throw you into the game. They check how good your network is. That probably changes how good the quality of your stream is going to be graphically. And because I didn't buy GeForce now, it, uh, it says looking for your next available rig, gamers ahead of you once. So there is a, uh, a waiting time in GeForce now if you don't actually buy it. Again, I bought Stadia, so I guess they had a little bit of an advantage there. You're almost there. You're next. Okay. And again, we are going to be trying this out on controller because we all know mouse and keyboard works. So I'm really interested in this one. Okay, so this is different. It asks you to sign into Steam, I guess to verify that you own the game. I swear to God if it asks me for a Steam Guard. I don't have Steam Guard. Okay, let's download Steam Guard, because I reset my phone yesterday. Okay, yeah, um... Okay, so we will not be able to do this one, because I would need my Steam Guard code. So we'll actually not be able to play on GeForce Now, unfortunately, because I need my Steam Guard code to get into my Steam and I cannot receive text messages because the mobile network I'm using is currently offline. Unfortunately, we will not be playing. You must own it on Steam. Okay, basically GeForce Now works in the way that you have to own the game on Steam and once you own the game on Steam, it seems that you're just able to use their services. So that's pretty damn nice. That's pretty cool. Um, I wish I could see how well it works, but currently right now I can't. That is going to be it for today's video, guys. Uh, let's conclude. Google Stadia, really, really good. Unfortunately, we weren't able to try GeForce now because Steam Guard Authenticator and Steam Guard want my text messages and my mobile network is offline. But from seeing what Stadia can do, I'm impressed. I really am. The fact that there's no latency on mouse and keyboard from me trying earlier and that there's no latency on a wireless gamepad like the Xbox One controller, I am well and truly impressed. Is it time to sell your gaming PC? No, not yet. No, uh, we're not at that point. Uh, I am impressed, but if you have an ultra wide monitor, for example, you won't be able to fully utilize that. So even though you might not be selling your gaming PC yet, what if you don't have one? 
in that case, I would say check it out. Check out what games are on it. And if it has the games you want to be playing or the games you need, I'd say go for it. Because if you have decent internet, there's zero latency and uh, very little people have an ultra wide monitor. So if you just have a standard TV, you might really want to try this out because it might turn out to be much more worth it for you than an actual gaming PC if you're only going to be playing certain games. Because you can play those games and then you can cancel your subscription and there you go, you're done with it. While with a gaming PC you can pay up to thousands and you can't just cancel a gaming PC when you're done with it. So I would definitely say try it out if it has the games you want and if you've got decent internet. You would be able to play first person shooters on it, no problem I think. That's it. If you guys like this video and you're part of that, 87.3% of people that aren't yet subscribed and aren't yet part of this community, we are constantly growing. I post tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. So if you enjoyed this type of content, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding that notification bell, become part of the 360p gang. Follow me on my social media here and here because I want to hear your guys' feedback. I want to hear what you guys want to see. Join us on Discord. Discord, join us on Reddit, and see you again in the next one. Peace.